Hey, sometimes you only have a limited amount of time to study English, but you really want to learn a lot. Maybe you only have three days. Well, that's exactly why I created today's English study plan. I'm going to tell you how to study English in three days following a proven plan that will help you speak English with more fluency. Are you ready? Well then, I'm teacher Tiffany. Let's jump right in. So let's get started with day number one. Now, day number one is listen to a podcast about one topic. Now, the focus of day one is putting information into your brain. If you want to speak English fluently, you must first start by putting English into your brain. Now let's see how this actually happens on day one. So first you need to decide which interest you want to focus on. You see, when you focus on something that you are interested in, you won't get bored. This means that you will retain information a lot faster and for a longer period of time. Now you'll see on the screen, a few of my interests. I love to paint. I love to cycle. I love to cook. I love basketball. And I also love running. I have a lot of interests and you probably have a lot of interests too, but on day one, you must pick one of your interests. So I've showed you my interests. I'm going to choose running. So here we go. Let's look at running. I've chosen running as my interest now still on day one. The next thing is find a podcast related to your interest. You see podcasts are a great way to hear natural English conversations between native English speakers about topics you are already interested in. This means that you will enjoy listening to the conversations. Now I'm going to explain this a little bit more, but I want to really emphasize the benefits of listening to English podcasts. They're totally free. You can hear real conversations about topics you actually care about. And it's easy to do something else while you have them playing in your ear. So again, day one, pick your interest, then find a podcast. Now you may be asking teacher, how do I find a podcast? Well, you can go to Google or whatever search engine you're familiar with. And all you have to do is type in English podcasts about, and then I put running because that's my interest. You can change that word or expression to reflect your interest. All right. So English podcasts about dot, dot, dot. All right. Now, again, we're still on day one. So we found our podcast. Now you need to write down nine vocabulary words that you don't know. You see, as you hear the words, you're going to write them down. Then simply continue listening to the podcast episode. Don't look up the words because you need to give your brain an opportunity to guess the meanings of the words. Basically you will start learning the words in context. This again is something that's very important for you to remember as you're listening. I don't want you to sit there and stress about having a dictionary right next to you to look up every word. No, all you need to do is as you're listening, Hey, I don't know that word, write it in your notebook and continue listening to the podcast. Now this is going to help you a lot. The fourth thing again, still on day one. Now at the end of the podcast, you're going to search for the meanings of each vocabulary word. You see, after you have finished listening to the episode, you can look up the words. This is because you will already have a good grasp of the content that was discussed during the episode. This will help you remember the words faster and make connections in your brain, but don't memorize the words just yet. So you're seeing on the screen, two of the words from the nine that I had in the previous step, right? You want to make sure after you finish listening to the podcast episode, that is when you look up the words. Now I do want to practice some pronunciation with you really quickly. So two of the nine words you'll see right here that I chose are right here, bound and leap. Now I want you to repeat after me bound. Excellent. One more time bound. Good. Now the word bound just means to walk or run with leaping strides. 
Now, the second word you see that I have here is leap. Good. Again, leap. Excellent. Now, this just means to jump or spring a long way to a great height or with great force. So now again, these are the words that I chose just to show you as an example. After I listened to the podcast, I wrote the meanings underneath the words inside of my notebook. This is day one, finding a podcast that's based on your interest. Now we need to move on to day number two, learn the words by memorizing them. Once again, this is putting information in. It's very important when you're trying to speak English fluently that you're putting lots of information in. And don't worry, I'll get to the part where I tell you how to get that information out. All right, so day two, learn the words by memorizing them. So here we go. Memorize each of the vocabulary words and their definitions. You see, the goal is to make sure you know each vocabulary word like the back of your hand. So on day two, you need to focus and memorize each word well. You see bound, leap, pace, saunter, shuffle, bolt, trot, linger, and trudge. These are the words that I chose from the podcast. But again, I want to emphasize on day two, you need to master the vocabulary words. You need to memorize them well. But remember, you have some connections because you listened to the full podcast on day one. Now, the next thing still on day two is to test yourself to see if you know the words. You see, after you memorize the words, you need to verify that you actually know them. So you can use flashcards, write out the definitions, or have someone quiz you. Like here, there's a phone conversation happening between a student and a teacher. And the teacher says, hey, can you explain what the word saunter means? Now again, you can have flashcards, you can write out the definitions, but it's very, very beneficial when you have someone to practice with. And that brings me to today's sponsor. That's right, today's sponsor, offers amazing tutors. Today's sponsor is Cambly. And Cambly, I want to thank you all so much for being willing to sponsor today's episode. I love working with you all. And the students who have worked with your tutors really have learned a lot. So let me explain something to you students. You see, the problem is you don't know where to find a great tutor that will be able to test you on day two. That is again why I love Cambly. You see, Cambly records all of the lessons you have with their tutors, so you can watch them over and over again. They have tutors from the USA, Canada, Australia, and the UK. Their tutors are available 24-7. You heard me right, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So you'll always have someone to study with but it doesn't stop there. You see, Cambly's tutors provide one-on-one private English lessons, and they offer tutors specifically trained to help you speak English fluently. Now, you see, Cambly wanted to give you as my student a special gift. You can get a free 10-minute lesson, and the link is in the description, or you can get 40% off any 12-month plan. That's right. Cambly is an awesome company and they want to help you. You have a limited amount of time. So on day two, you need to practice to make sure you understand and know the words. Well, practice with a Cambly tutor and you can try them out. Free 10 minute lesson just by clicking the link in the description. Or if you are ready to really give a lot of effort to your English studies, you can get 40% off of any of their 12 month plans. Again, Both links are in the description. Cambly, thank you so much for partnering with me and sponsoring this video. I know that my students are going to continue to love your tutors. All right. Okay, guys. So let's keep going to day number three. Now you've already practiced with your tutor and now you come to day number three. Use the vocabulary words you learned. I promised you'll get the information out. On day three is when the information you put in on days one and two will come out. So how do you do that? Here we go. First, divide the words you chose by three. Today's goal is to use the words in three different ways. So you need to divide them equally first. 
So you have three different sets of three. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, eight, nine. Now, after you've done that, you're going to record a short video clip of you explaining three of the words. You see, when you teach something that you learned, you will remember it for a longer period of time. So recording a video of yourself teaching three of the words will give you more confidence and help you remember them. Now, I'm going to quickly read to you what I said in my video from three of the words I learned from day one in the podcast episode about running. So here we go. Follow along. Here's my video clip. Hey, this week I learned a lot of new vocabulary words. I learned bound, which is similar to what kangaroos do as they move through the fields. Then I learned leap, which reminds me of what grasshoppers do as they move through the grass. I also learned pace, which reminds me of how marathon runners move at a consistent pace. So again, I recorded my video clip explaining bound, leap, and pace, and then this video clip can be shared with other students and other English learners. Again, getting the information out that you put in. Now here's the other way you're going to do again on day three, day three is going to be a lot of action, a lot of activity, putting into practice what you learned, then comment under various videos or blog posts using three of the words you see throughout your day, you need to find ways to use three of the words you learned. You can use one word per comment in order to practice what you learned. Now on the screen right now, you see three different things. The left, it's YouTube, the middle is Facebook, and the right is Instagram. I use all three of these social media platforms every single day. And you probably have certain social media platforms that you use on a regular basis. So the point of day three is to take the information you put in and connect it with your real life, things you already use on a regular basis. So let's say, for example, there was a video and the video had runners in it, I could comment and say, there were a few people sauntering around in the background. What about Facebook? I could comment underneath a post or an image and say, wow, you both are amazing. You never shuffle your feet. And what about Instagram? I've watched teacher Tiffany. She's pretty good. I like her videos. <laughs> And she had a video where she told a story and I commented and said, wow, teacher Tiffany has so much energy. I think she can bolt past any runner. So again, you see, I used three of the words and I commented under a Facebook post, a YouTube video and an Instagram post. Now here's the other thing you need to do. Write a personal post about your day using three of the words. Remember, we have three sets of three. So now we're on our last set. In order to remember words, you must use them in real life. Basically, you need to use the words to speak about your life. So you will write one post using three of the words. Now I actually am a runner. I love exercising. So this is a real post that I put on Facebook, but I'm going to show you how I use the third set of three words inside of my post. And I want you to do the same thing, connecting the words with your real life. Here we go. So I said, I decided to run today. There were a few people lingering around the gym door when I first arrived, but they all looked like they wanted to run too. I trotted up the steps when the doors opened and I felt great throughout my entire run. Before I started running on a daily basis, I used to just trudge around, but it feels good to be in shape. Now you see what I did, right? I used three of the words from day one. I used linger. I used trot and I also used trudge. So again, you can do the same thing over a three day period, learn a lot of English and start speaking more fluently. I really hope you enjoyed this lesson. Don't forget to click the link in the description to get your Cambly tutor to help you on day two. I hope you enjoy and I will see you next week. Remember to speak English. You still there? 
you know what time it is. It's story time. Hey, I said it's story time. <laughs> All right. Today's story is about my grandmother. Now, my grandmother passed away several years ago, but there are certain things about my grandmother. This is my maternal grandmother, my mom's mother, that I will never forget. She was very loving. She was a good cook. You always knew that you were going to be fed when you were at my grandmother's house. So one time we went to visit my grandmother and she loved this buffet restaurant in Virginia. So my family and I, we took my grandmother to this restaurant. I liked it too. It was all you can eat. And I really liked salad bars. They had a great salad bar. So we're eating and everyone, you know, at a buffet, you eat your food. And then when you're done with your first plate, you go back up for the next plate. So at this time, I was still eating from my first plate and my grandmother was sitting next to me. So my mom, I don't think my dad was there this time. My mom got up to get another plate. And my grandmother got really quiet. So I'm sitting there eating. I thought she was just focused on her plate. And she said, hey, Tiff. So I looked at her and I said, yeah. She said, how are you doing? I said, I'm good, grandma, I'm good. She said, I got a little something for you, girl. I said, okay, grandma, thank you. She said, I'll give it to you when we leave, though. Because my mom was walking back to the table. But she was being very secretive. So I said, okay, grandma. So I continued eating my food, but I had kind of a, a little smirk, a little smile on my face. So we continued eating our lunch and we got through our plates and my grandmother acted like nothing happened when my mom came back. She just started talking like normal. So we finished our food and we got up to walk to the car to leave. And I noticed that my grandmother was kind of lagging behind a little bit and she was kind of rummaging through her purse. So my mom walked ahead and was going to open the car and I was kind of in between them. So I looked back just to check on my grandmother. She wasn't too far back, but I could tell she was walking a little slower. So as soon as she kind of got up to where I was, her hand, she had her hand like this. And she said, Tiff. I said, yeah, grandma. And she said, give me your hand, girl. So she put her hand in my hand. And when she released it, I felt some kind of paper type substance. She said, don't tell your mama. So I opened my hand and it was a $20 bill. Now, again, my grandmother was older at this time. I think I may have been 19. Like I wasn't a kid anymore. So I looked at her and said, Grandma, I'm okay. She said, shh, baby girl, just take it. So I smiled and I took the money and I said, thank you, Grandma. She said, you know I love you, girl. Now, so I took the money and I, I thought it was funny. My grandmother, who's older, was giving me money like an allowance. And I didn't need it. I mean, I, I was in school, but I didn't need it. So fast forward. Now, that's how my grandmother was. When I got my first job, my first salary, I said, I'm going to do the same thing grandma did. My mother never knew that my grandmother gave me that money. Every pay period, I would send my grandmother a certain amount of money in the mail. And I said, grandma, this is between you and me. And every month I would send her money. And my mom didn't know, but after my grandmother passed away, or maybe I told her before, I can't remember when I told her, but I told my mom the story of my grandmother slipping me money. And then I said, it was my turn once I got a job to start slipping my, my grandmother money through the mail. So it's just the love of a grandmother and how, you know, what you do affects people because she was so giving, it made me want to give her even more. So maybe your grandmother or your grandfather is the same. You can put your story in the comment section. Let us know how your grandmother was or is. All right, guys, I will see you next week. Thank you so much for joining. I love you all. And I'll talk to you next time. <laughs>